Free Ren Beyond Journey's End, season one, episode one, starting with the opening. Yeah, full disclosure, I know a, a little bit about the show. I know it has incredibly adorable characters and animation. And I did not really see, there was an episode on in the room I was in once. So I know what it looks like. Yeah, there we go, the, the adorable, adorable characters. It feels very light. I don't know how to put that. Light and clean, delicate. And medieval. I don't think I've ever watched something that was like this fantasy-esque. I mean, everything I watch is fantasy to some degree, but oh, maybe the last time was uh, Dragon Prince, that kind of setting. All right, let's go. Free Rain, episode one. At the northernmost end of the continent, I arrived at the place of the people of this world called Heaven. Areola, <laughs> the land where souls rest. <laughs> Many souls gather there, and I spoke with friends who once fought alongside me. Free Ren. Oh, hold on a second. Oh god, is this gonna cause another controversy? Sub dub controversy? I hope not. We're defaulting to sub. <laughs> the voice is so different. <laughs> it's funny to compare. That one line, the one name. <laughs> Oh, we already defeated the Demon King. We already did that. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you can do both. What, is she some kind of like long-living elf? Oh, that's an interesting setup premise. Well, it's, it's kind of grand and glorious. Free Ren, Beyond Journey's End, again. What show are we watching again? I know I have seen this device before where it starts after the, the last boss has been defeated. Or like, there's often an ancient evil that has been defeated at some point in history. I don't know if I remember seeing a show where what looks to be the protagonists are the ones who who defeated the, the great evil and just defeated the great evil right now. And it's really cool to me because it's something you do think about sometimes in shows, but then also in real life. For me, this is more than media. It's like looking for maps for life. And because stories have a beginning and an end, hopefully, usually, you get this satisfying feeling of closure, end of arc, etc. But then you think, well, that's not the end of their lives. Where do you go from here? What do you even do from here? And then that's definitely my experience as well. You know, you have like one grand victory. You can feel like you're at the pinnacle of your life and accomplishment, but then that quickly fades. And while you'll always have that and it'll always be something wonderful inside of you and you'll get utility from and have learned from, etc. It poses the new challenge of what's next. And it's not always a positive feeling either. There's an initial period of, you know, kind of basking in the glow of, of what has just happened, but then there could be a great silence or emptiness or confusion about what you're even doing, especially if the thing was high octane or very very exciting, very stimulating, very rewarding. It fades and you find that sometimes yourself or other people, they end up chasing it in odd ways. This is a fantasy setting and story, so I'm sure there'll be a new evil that pops up soon enough, but there's something oddly challenging about the peacetime as well. The subtitle makes sense now, Beyond Journey's End. And we're starting off as grand heroes already. We're celebrities. Everyone loves us. This is so different from the opening of Attack on Titan, even though it kind of looks like Attack on Titan. Like, this looks like the very street that the scouts come come home to. Okay. Big doubt. Big doubt. Let's say chapter six, last battle. Oh, yes. Peace time, happiness, and anime. Nothing ever goes wrong. Too happy. Too happy. You're bringing it on yourselves. Uh, at this point, I don't even have sympathy for you. Someone's gonna eat your mother. Your whole house and family getting obliterated by the, the gun demon? Is that what that was? Though admittedly, I would just watch a series of like, I'm trying to cope with life after defeating the demon king. Minute for the booze. It's also maybe a power vacuum. And definitely the beginning of a new one. Damn. Really painting the picture of this guy. I wonder if he likes to drink. Oh yeah, I know that feeling. That feeling when you're on a quest to defeat the Demon King, but you're hungover. Weekly as lightweight. All their failures are going to seem great now, in hindsight, because they're successful and alive. That's a beautiful thing. Sweet. They gotta be close, close. Ten years of... Oh yeah, for her, she's... I guess she can live forever. Could just be the booze. 
Uh oh. <laughs> so, 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 have someone in your party that just live will live hundreds of years or who knows how long. The envy. What I love about that scene is something I've thought about a lot. It's something I feel like I talk about a lot with people who are in not so good of a place and are reflecting on like oh, all the ways I failed. I haven't done anything all my life. I only have failures to show for it. I really, really, really understand that pain. Been there plenty of times. Still go there time to time. But what's so cool about that, what's so uplifting for me is also having seen the other side of it where looking at a particular thing or endeavor or challenge, it was nothing but failure and it was excruciating for a long time. And then like suddenly it wasn't a failure. Suddenly it was something that was good. There's this magic that happens where immediately all of those failures get this kind of warm glow around them where you're like, oh yeah, that was part of the necessary ingredients or components to get to this thing. And this great thing I have now would not have felt anywhere near as good or would not have been possible without all of those things that were so agonizing back then. If there's that kind of ruminating, terrible, failure-based thinking, one way to look at it is that it's, you just haven't completed that arc yet, but you could, it's there at any time, as long as you're not giving up. And to look at the giving up thing broadly, you can take a very liberal interpretation with giving up where maybe your success doesn't look exactly what you thought it would look like when you first started out, but maybe you pivot to something that is different than you initially thought, but also is success for the fundamental things you were actually after, like a feeling of accomplishment, esteem, personal growth, etc. The only real giving up is like just stopping, you know, ceasing action. Everything else is just a pivot. Guaranteed, the 10 years for them fighting the Demon King were full of hellish experiences, not only because of the individual pitfalls they encountered along the way, like, you know, hangovers and trapped chests, but because for 10 years they have this hanging threat over their heads, that's the Demon King, not knowing at all if they will be able to succeed and very much anticipating their own deaths. And that's just like their constant state of being every day for a decade. And then immediately upon slaying the De Demon King, it's a different color. It's a beautiful thing. That I think is the best ultimate way I can think of conceptualizing excruciating failures. It's just that you're still mid-arc. The short hundred years. Hi chance she stops by and they're all just dead of old age. Damn her. Must be nice. She's keeping herself busy. Introvert, maybe? That's tough. I don't know if I can do that. I need a travel party. Don't you want someone to share these beautiful locations with? She loves her books. Again. <laughs> How many times? You're going to fall for the mimic. So, yeah, but my how much time has passed in that montage? It's been 50 years? Good god, I was joking, but um, I don't know if they're ready to have an adventure anymore. I guess those, those three are just not going to be characters. She just doesn't understand years. Damn her. Alright, give us the bad news. Which one of us is dead? Imagine just living with this in your house. I think I have a closet like that. <laughs> don't want to look inside. If you don't open it, it's not there. Wow, that is extremely touching. Yeah, they have that kind of bond. It's weird. I don't know. I'm just chalking it up to being an elf because I don't. I know nothing about that. But like, there's an extreme <laughs> lack of awareness of human life, and I don't want to say a coldness because it doesn't feel like meanness. It feels more like just not really thinking about others in the same way. Sometimes that is just a result of extreme independence and self-reliance. It also doesn't mean she doesn't deeply care about them. I, I think some people, and I would say I have this to some degree. I can be really far away from people I care about and not talk to them as frequently, but still feel the bond just as strongly and I hope that they understand that you know I hope they don't take long absences or gaps in communication as uncaring but still it would be nice right 
Oh, well, yeah, there it is. It's kind of what I was picking up on. There's some some potential for growth there, I guess. I hesitate to judge. She hasn't asked about the other two. Oh, they're there. あなたは全然変わりませんね。あ、頭撫でんな。愛禅はあまり変わっていないね。そうか。How can you tell with the facial hair? だからここから1週間くらい歩いて。そんなに遠いのか。まったく老人を酷使しようって。Just like old times. いろいろなところを旅したね。何もかもが新鮮で this is a special kind of bittersweet pain. The retreading old adventures much later. Oh, I was not understanding the scale of that dog. They all clearly adore her. <laughs> it's funny how like I don't know this character very well. I was not on the adventure for the Demon King, but I still feel it. The music's really nice in the show. Very heartfelt. I'll also say, like I said, I was, I'm not willing to judge necessarily her seeming coldness. That kind of time perspective has got to just change things completely. And also, I think weird to say, but not not grieving, not outwardly grieving, even not inwardly grieving, I don't think is such a bad thing or sign. There's actually been a few instances I can remember where people I know opened up to me after the death of a, a loved one. And one common thing I hear a lot is like, I feel bad that I don't feel bad. You know, I don't think that's often talked about, except maybe privately one on one. But I mean, my answer to that is always you feel how you feel. And it's going to be different depending a lot on expectations. How how the person passed, what your relationship was like with them, whether there were things unresolved, un unsaid, etc. There are so many things that go into it and everyone kind of handles it differently. I, I wouldn't necessarily take it as a negative thing. Her outward display is uncaring, though it's tough to fully articulate why. There is a possibility though that there is something not realized. You know, there's something not fully explored about the meaning of the people she's with or the relationships or the depth or the beauty. That is something that maybe can be explored. <laughs> This is coming up, yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's it. It's tough to tell exactly what it is. Is it a distancing? Is it like a non-exploration of the depths of bonds of people and meaning? Uh, maybe a little bit of a self-defense thing. There's some guilt coming up. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah, sometimes it's on a delay. <laughs> Man, her opinions, to their credit, they really, really understand her beyond the surface. Please, alcohol is a preservative and no one can tell me differently. I and mean, what more could you really ask for in life? Which doesn't mean he's not afraid, but... We got humans at home. It's hard to tell with all the facial hair. That was a warmer departure than usual. Someone get this girl like a bicycle or something. A horse? We got roads. <laughs> Episode one, the journey's end. What a interesting subversion. 20 years after the death of Himmel the Hero. 20 years have passed already in one scene. <laughs> Told you, alcohol is a preservative. Disappointing. Wait, didn't she just say she came with a bottle of alcohol to pour on his grave? Now it's suddenly paying her debts. Hmm. 
魔法使いとしての素質がありますあなたの旅に連れて行ってくれませんか実戦での見習い魔法使いの死亡率は知ってるでしょう友人から預かった子を七に送るつもりはないよ、well, then you gotta make sure she doesn't die. でもこんなの解読してどうすんのさ死ぬのは怖くないんじゃなかったの理由は二つあります一つはあなたたちの名前格好をつけていたから、yeah, He's just facing it 前より死ぬのが怖くなったから Look at someone to take care of. He has a, a responsibility now, a duty. And she's not going to take the kid. Kaido Kuno Katatema de Kamawana no de Feruni Maho Sieta Getewa Kuremasenka. Watashiwa Sorio no de Domo Katega Wakara no de Sorio 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 She looks like the, the class president from FLCL. Some good men. <laughs> What were you saying about potential? I mean, it looked pretty good to me. I'm new to this world, but. Oh, she's taking care of this girl for sure. This is the start of a long relationship. That was a very heartfelt introduction. Somber and bittersweet, but beautiful. <laughs> well, first adventure is defeating the Demon King. Second adventure, opening our hearts. Both difficult. Let's look at her a backpack too. I hate carrying things in my hands. Wow, very, very touching. It's interesting. I like that the first episode starts after the end on purpose. There's no action in this episode at all, save for her not blowing up a rock. But very well thought out, very poignant. Free Run's personality is interesting. I think there's some part of the show that's suggesting there's a lot of room for emotional growth and development. Connection to people which might come via the, the kid, her apprentice, who will probably be a reflection of her. A mirror to who she is and how she developed. Gifts that she has as well as things she never learned. I mean, side note, that's also interesting because we get a lot of the mentor thing. You know, we're following a protagonist who finds someone above them and we get the wisdom of that but there's another side as well which is also great which is all the insight you get from having a mentee someone that you're guiding to watch someone grow in ways you've grown is really thrilling it also enhances your growth it helps you understand it better it gives you a feeling of raising the ceiling you know like you you've gone this far you pushed this far now you are training someone to push the ceiling farther and you're holding it up for them to continue the work it's also related to something i've talked about a lot but haven't really reached any definitive closure on or have trouble expressing which is lenses you know like you are just yourself and it's not easy to fully appreciate yourself for what you are. It's hard to find an optimal point. You know, like you can be really self-disparaging and miss your own beauty. You can also be self-aggrandizing and use it as a crutch or a shield. It's difficult to get the same kind of narrative sweetness from looking at your own life in terms of an arc or a journey in the same way you can looking at another person. But looking at other people who are on the same path as you allows you to have that reflected back at you. That being said, even the ways she has yet to grow that I think the show will make her grow, tough for me to be really critical of it. I just think it's a type and there's a strength in that as well. Some people are just really self-assured and independent and and it's sometimes challenging because you want so much from those people and you may not get it, but you can't help but love them anyway. You know, you love them for what they are. There's a real draw in people who just have everything they need. It's dangerous to try to self-identify here, but I think I have elements of that independence. Like I can go off into the world, whatever, and do my own thing and not really look back. And I kind of trust that what I need is there. I trust that bonds transcend physical limitations, but I also am very dependent in the sense that I need to be around people. I can't just like be isolated in a room or, you know, walking alone forever. I need contact but the independent part of me understands that the independence is not necessarily uncaring or coldness yes part of her can learn to be more feeling maybe she didn't fully appreciate her friends but that's not all of it some of it is just like her disposition she takes great utility in her travels and the world nature it seems her books she has a rich life at its worst it's denial it's self-preservation, not wanting to get too close or get too deep because it could be painful. It could be arrogance, you know, like these people are beneath me, which I don't think is the case for her. At its best, it's something like just faith. You know, it's faith in the world. It's just calm acceptance of things that are out of your control. It's patience. It's lack of panic, needing to cling on to everything that you love for fear of losing it. I think it will be interesting to explore what that range is for, for free rent.